Hi, and welcome to Meet the Bulldog series, a series of videos where I will introduce the players playing for the Croatia Bulldogs team competing in the Pro Chess League 2023 organized by Chess.com by taking a look at their respective best games of their career so far. In the very first video, we will be taking a look at games of one of our players, a young and talented Dutch international master, Elina Roberts. I really hope you will enjoy it. Now, even though Eline has been well known in Dutch chess circles uh, as one of the biggest young talents out there, as somebody who has won multiple Dutch youth championships, and even though she demonstrated her talent by winning the World Junior U14 Championships that was played online uh, in 2020, and also by winning an open tournament, Brook Semesters Open held in Belgium at the age of 15, uh, which was maybe not the strongest open tournament at all, of all time, but it was still an open tournament and she won it at the age of 15, which elevated her rating to almost 2300, or more precisely 202097. 20, I think the wider chess audience uh, first time heard about her and her name when she distinguished herself at the European Women's Team Championship in November 2021, where she won an individual bronze medal on board too, scoring a very impressive result 7 out of 9. So here we have a 15 year old girl competing against some of the strongest female players <laughs> at the time and scoring 7 out of 9. It was extremely, extremely impressive. And one game that stood out to my eyes was her game against a very strong Ukrainian international master, Yulia Osmak. Uh, Osmak was uh, rated 24-23 at the time, Elina was rated 23-04, and we joined the game on move 17. So, uh, earlier in the opening, Elina has given up a pawn in a Karo Khan to obtain a very promising compensation. And uh, if, as you will see maybe more vividly later in this video, one trait of her style is that she doesn't fear to sacrifice material and that she is extremely, extremely good when it comes to handling the initiative. So here, by move 17, even though there are no queens on the board, Elina already has a very significant advantage due to the bishop pair, double po f pawns, and also difference in the piece activity, like these pieces are not at all developed. But of course, you know, black's position does look kinda solid, what are the weaknesses? So let's take a look at how she handled this uh, position. So here she played, I think, a very strong move. So she played the move knight to e2. Now, uh, you might be wondering, okay, isn't it like more natural to put the rook on the open file? But, and maybe 99% of people would just play that. But the problem here is that it is not entirely clear whether this rook belongs here yet. Or maybe it can, I don't know, double on the div file or whatever. While this knight, you know that it will go somewhere else, most not likely to eat to in the future. So when you have the, the, the uh, decision to make and between a move that you know you will probably make and the move you are not sure you will better will make, it is almost always better to do the former. And to me, this, this is a very strong move because uh, we are taught that you should always improve your worst place piece and here this principle was uh, executed to the maximum. So here after knight to e5, uh, knight to e2, knight to e5, bishop to b3 was played. Apparently it transpires that knight to d4 was a way to be stronger because it creates the threat of knight to e6, but bishop to b3 is very logical as well. Not yet determining whether this knight will go to a d4 or f4. And after rook to d1, rook to d1, we see the advantage because we didn't lose a tempo to play rook e1 and then recapture on d1. The rook went from f1 in one go. And after bishop to c5, trying to develop a Probably it's better to develop the knight, but okay, I mean, it's very tough position for black, and black was a very strong player. Uh, so, you know, uh, and even such a strong player made mistakes. So, uh, bishop c5 was played, and here knight to f4, uh, threatening to jump to e6. And after bishop to b6, the problem is that with this whole bishop c5, bishop b6 idea, white has, uh, or black has relinquished control over this uh, b4 f8 diagonal. Once again, probably playing um, knight h6 at some point and not yet determining the fate of this bishop was more resilient, but uh, black was in big trouble all the same. I mean, look at the difference in the activity of the pieces. But okay, so bishop c5, knight f4, uh, bishop b6, and now bishop to b4 was played, a very strong move. Uh, seizing this a uh, powerful diagonal. Now king uh, to c8 was played. At this probe with desperation, black was trying to avoid some 96 uh, problems. Uh, it's hard to offer advice, but and, and let's not delve too deeply in the analysis of the game. So king to c8 was played, 
bishop to f8, uh, creating a very strong threat of bishop g7 winning the rook. Now h5. Now a very powerful move, especially from a human standpoint, king to f1. It is like saying to the black, okay, you, you have nothing to move, so I'll just make a very nice improving move, potentially bringing the king closer for some endgame. Of course, the computer will say there is something more direct, but this is a very logical from the human perspective, because once again, it is very difficult for black to find moves here. Um, now, g5 was played as, once again, some sort of desperation. Uh, because, I mean, what else? If you play knight to h6, probably bishop g5, and then you lose f6, and then everything collapses. g6 is also weak. So, yeah, it's understandable that black wanted to do something direct and play g5. But here, Elena showcases another very strong trait of her style. Very good and precise calculation. So here, she plays bishop to g7, attacking this rook this uh, f6 pawn and also kind of distracting the defender of the g8 knight which is also under the attack rook h7 and now knight to h5 protecting the rook and keeping the threat to the g8 knight and after rook h5 uh, bishop to g8 uh, these bishops are powerful bishop f6 is threatened and after g4 bishop to f6 elena went on to win the game quite easily so this might not be like the most remarkable combination or, you know, tactical brilliancy or, or like beautiful sacrificial attack. But I think it is very impressive to uh, win a game in such a style, in such an important tournament at such an age against such a strong opponent. And I don't know if a winner would agree, but I would definitely write, rate this victory very, very highly <laughs> if it were my career. Now, after her success at that European Women's Championship, Elena kept on bringing good results throughout 2022. Already early in 2022, she won another very strong Open, Untergrombach Open, in, uh, held in January, uh, where she beat uh, the Grandmaster in the very last round in a very crazy style to clinch the first prize. So it already made some headlines and, you know, people were aware that there is a big new talent on the horizon. However, uh, throughout the 2022, there were arguably even greater successes ahead of her. And definitely one of the biggest success of her career was her um, uh, participation or her performance at the Chess Olympia 2022 held in Chennai in August. So she participated in the Olympiad for the first time. She played on board one for the Netherlands. She scored seven and a half out of ten and she won the silver medal for her performance. Um, I've checked all the games from this uh, event. Th those are some of the most amazing, entertaining and tactical games you will ever see. Uh, there were a lot of, you know, topsy-turvy encounters, uh, games where evaluation swings were uh, tremendous that weren't quite suitable maybe for, for a format of this video, but I would definitely recommend you to check, say, her games against Marie Sebag or Maria Muzichuk. So she was playing against top uh, female players and holding her ground and even more than that beating them convincingly uh, so for the purpose of this video and, and the PGN I have decided to single out her game uh, against Corit Daisy uh, a Peruvian women grandmaster rated 2370 and also very well known and very well established female player uh, so this game was also extremely combative extremely sharp uh, however, by move 26, uh, after her opponent overlooked some intermediate knight b6 check earlier, Elena obtained a decisive advantage. And now we join the action on move 26. Uh, the situation is quite messy, but white actually has a decisive combination at uh, her disposal, which Elena, of course, saw. So, how should white play here? There is some, uh, so for the moment, white is a pawn up, but there is some inconvenience. Black has the two bishops. Uh, there is some pin on, on this uh, rook on e1, and black would potentially like to maybe play, I don't know, like uh, king c6 or something, get, uh, get away from the pin, maybe even bishop to c6. So what Elena correctly realized, re realized that there is a very nice tactical slash exchanging operation here. So here she played the move rook to d7, eliminating the, the knight and forcing exchanges on d7. And knight d7 is also strong, but rook d7 is even more forcing. And after rook to d7, knight to d7, uh, in the game rook f5 was played and the winner was just a piece up. Uh, after bishop to d3, uh, rook to f2, knight to e5. However, the question is, okay, what happens after king to d7? 
when there is there is a simple discovery with rook to e5 after bishop to b5 check uh, the king can go to d6 to protect this rook and white remains an exchange up for example ab5 rook e5 once again it is not the most remarkable tactical operation of all time but uh, I just wanted to single this game out uh, in the context of the performance at the Olympiad, uh, and I mean, besides beating such a such a strong opponent on board one in such an important event is definitely something, even if the combination itself is not, say, the most difficult of all times. I would definitely urge you to check some other videos from the Olympiad in in full, but for the sake of the fragments, I thought this one is very appropriate. So after the Olympiad, uh, uh, Alina continued her good form for the rest of 2022, more or less. And another very successful tournament and appearance for the national team was her participation in the European Chess Club for Women held in October, where she made 5 out of 7. And we will examine two games from this event, simply because they showcase her talent and, and are maybe more remarkable uh, in their beauty. And the, uh, Whereas in the previous two positions we have seen Elena's handling of, let's say, queenless positions or middle game positions, here we will see maybe more characteristic games where she has the initiative attack and where craziness is happening all over the place. So in this uh, position we have her game uh, uh, against Victoria Radeva, a 22-60 rated player from Bulgaria, uh, played in that uh, European Chess Club Cup. And we have we see that Alina is currently two pawns down. She she has sacrificed some material, but all her forces are kinda concentrating on the king side, and Black only has this knight quasi defending the king. So it is not surprising that White has a very decisive combination here. If you want, you can pause the video and try to find it. But the combination combination starts with the move knight to f6. Now um, this not only threatens like a fork and to win the rook, but also it transpires that Black has no good way of declining this sacrifice, because if king to f8, knight uh, g to h, uh, h7, king e7, rook to g7 leads to a decisive attack with the king in the middle of the board, uh, king to h8 runs into knight to f7, so Black probably has no choice but to take g takes f6. It's not immediately obvious why this loses, it is true that there is this dangerous check knight to e4, but after knight to g6, you need to find one good move, and the winner, of course, manages, she plays e takes f6. A very quiet move, uh, simply getting a very annoying pawn on f6, uh, and it's very difficult to make such moves in the middle of the raging attack, let's say, it's quiet moves that don't have direct threats. But the power of this move is that it threatens some queen h6 ideas and rook g6 ideas, and it is surprisingly difficult for black to do anything against it. Now, in order to demonstrate the threat, if black plays some random move like a4, we play queen to h6, threatening mate on g7. And now, if bishop f8, it seems black can deal with this, but now rook g6 comes and this is just over. Uh, mate will happen because the king is simply helpless. fg6, queen g6, king h8, f7, uncovering the power of the bishop, and now there are threats, queen g8, queen g7, and this is just curtains. That's why black played bishop to f8, covering the diagonal in advance and preventing the queen from infiltrating. But here, uh, Elena adds fuel to the fire and finishes the game in style with a very nice move. Queen g6, rook g6, sorry, fg6 and now f7, opening uh, the diagonal dark squares and uh, giving uh, air to the pieces. And now if black tries something like king h7, knight g5 will win all the same. And if king f7 is in the game, Knight g5, king g8, uh, king e7, queen e6 is no better, the, the king is getting hunted and checkmated. And if king g8, queen e5, and now there is no defense against the threat of queen g8 mate. Uh, it's amazing actually, because white has only three pieces, but these three pieces coordinate perfectly, while blacks, all these pieces are totally unable to come and help defend the king and, and do anything about these threats. So, a very nice and very powerful attack that once again demonstrates uh, Elena's talent for playing with initiative and very good calculating ability. Now, let's take a look at another game played by Elena in the European Chess Club 2022, this time against Anastasia Rachmangulova from Ukraine, uh, an opponent rated 2260. It features one of the most remarkable and fantastic pieces of calculation slash uh, only moves that I have ever seen. 
So we joined the game on move 45. Um, we can see that white has this very strong passed pawn on uh, on b6, but uh, black has some compensation. Uh, there is this annoying pin on the first rank, and there are some threats. For example, if uh, if white doesn't do anything, like let's say bishop c6 even or something like that, kind of threatening to play b7, white would already lose because of bishop e5, queen e3, f4, and now the queen has to move away from this diagonal and uh, bishop d4 comes, for example, queen to e2, bishop d4, and that's all she wrote, black, black will win. So, yeah, th there are some ways to lose, there are some ways to keep the balance, probably like queen d1 would maybe keep the balance, or whatever, you would lose the b6 pawn, or, and it's sufficient to draw, uh, something like that. But there is one, and only one strictly winning move here for white, and if you want, you can take a few seconds to try to figure it out. But if not, this is the solution. Bishop to c2. Absolutely fantastic move, in my opinion, and once again, based on a very concrete and very accurate calculation. Uh, the idea of this move is simply to divert the queen to move it from either this first rank or from the b-file, so that it doesn't attack the b-pawn. For example, if uh, queen, I don't know, queen b5, for example, moving the queen along the b-file, it allows us to simply exchange this knight, bishop to e4, the uh, fe4, queen e4, and this is just winning, now the b-pawn is strong, their king is weak, there is no threat to this uh, bishop, and this is easily won. So, uh, yeah, that's maybe I should emphasize, that's another point, that <laughs> this is also attacking the e4 knight. So, if black plays something like queen to c1, kinda, you know, keeping the queen on the first rank, but uh, the, uh, in order to keep maybe some attacking chances, the problem is that this uh, loses control over the b pawn and now b7 just wins because b8 is queen on the next move and there is not much that <laughs> that black can do about it. That is why queen to c2 is forced and of course that's the most natural move. But here we see the point b7 threatening to queen. Black has to play queen to b1 to pin again and also to keep an eye on this pawn. And now queen to a7. A very pretty quiet move, uh, simply threatening to promote. Um, it looks a little bit, you know, uh, risky to kind of leave all the pieces around the king, but it transpires there is nothing for black, and the black, best black can do is to play knight to f2. And this is the only way to prolong the game, and after queen to f2, this would actually work for black, after queen to b7, if the bishop was everywhere, anywhere else on the board. Okay, maybe not every, anywhere else, maybe not on d2, but anywhere where it was not attacked by the queen. But since the bishop is on f4, that's the whole point of the calculation, uh, and this had to be envisioned back on move 45 when bishop c2 was played. Queen to f4, and now white has an extra piece, and after queen d5, the game did go on for a while, but ultimately Owen didn't have that much trouble in converting it into a full point. So, yeah, this is, I mean, it's a very beautiful combination, strictly the only move, and I think the ability to find this move showcases some talent, even if, you know, there will certainly be someone who will say, oh, but it's not such difficult for 2350 rated player. I still think it's, it shouldn't be frowned upon or, or you know, looked down. I think it, it's a pretty incredible move and must have been very nice to be executed over the board. Last but not least, in January 2023, Elena participated in the biggest tournament of her, of her career so far, Tata Steel Challenger 2023, a very well-known tournament with a very long tradition held in Vaikanze almost every January for the last, I think, 80 years or something, uh, and played also along the Tata Steel Masters group, which features the very best players in the world. So she was by far the lowest rated in this tournament and by very wide margin, I'm talking about 100 uh, rating points, and she had to face several 2600 rated uh, players. So it, the tournament is still ongoing and the verdict of whether the tournament will be successful or not is, is still pretty much out there. But already in the second round of the tournament, Elena stunned the chess world and showed that she, her imitation was not a uh, luck or coincidence because she scored the biggest and the greatest victory of her career so far by beating the reigning Dutch champion who just won the Dutch championship in, in December, so just a month ago, and who was in good form there, and uh, the one of the strongest Dutch grandmasters uh, in the last 10, 15, 20 years, uh, second to Anish Giri and so on and so forth, uh, Grandmaster Evan Lamy. And she did it in quite some style, in a very typical, very energetic, very Elene style. And we will just see how that happens. So we uh, joined the game on move 35. So earlier in the game, 
uh, Boyack decided to lock the structure on the queen side, uh, which was you know, debated whether that was good or not because it kind of prevented counterplay on that side of the board. And in return, Elena just went for full, uh, full attack on the king side. As you can see, there are no pawns in front of her king, so she played very fearlessly, very aggressively. However, on move 35, a very critical moment arose because black just pushed the pawn to g5, attacking the queen. And now you might wonder, okay, but what's going on here? It's a crazy position. Well, if white retreats the queen, say, to g3 or anywhere, then black gets to play knight 7 to g6. And now these knights on e5 and g6 are very harmonious, protecting each other. This g5 pawn is uh, controlling some important squares on f4 and h4. And this would have actually been very unclear, maybe even better for black with good chances of, of taking over the initiative. Uh, the problem is that this bishop on c2 is kind of restricted and it's pretty much anybody's game But I feel if if she retreated the queen that black would have have gotten all the chances to actually take over and win the game However, Elena correctly realized that and demonstrated her big talent and her great uh, calculation ability and her imagination and creativity by not retreating the queen but by playing this fantastic move bishop to e5 simply not uh, taking care of the queen, ignoring the attack, but bringing the bishop to e5 and eyeing the king on h8. And now, of course, if black plays, uh, takes on e5 with uh, d takes e5, then queen to e5, and all the threats are pre preserved, and these pawns are extremely strong, and white preserves a very, very good position. Uh, and if g takes f4, which of course, I mean, why not take the queen? Here comes f takes e7, this is the point. Um, uh, the, the, even though the bishop is hanging, this pawn is, you know, very powerful. It is pow more powerful than this queen and 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 rook. And it is, the threat is now simply if captures the the, the bishop, then f takes uh, e, uh, e takes f queen, and this is mate. Or yeah, so simply taking the rook is a threat. So black has to do something about it. Uh, and if rook f6, for example. Then bishop f6, uh, king g8, and rook f3. And this still doesn't help because this pawn is very powerful. f4 is coming, uh, king g1, rook g1 is coming, and yeah, black is just in, in trouble and totally losing. So black played uh, king to g8 here, but after e takes f8, king to f8, bishop to d6, this is now check, king to e8, and now bishop to f4. Uh, white has just won two pieces in the rook and the pawn for the queen. White has these powerful passed pawns on, on e4 and uh, d5, and also a very good coordination of the pieces. There are no threats to the king, even though it's a little bit exposed. And Elena actually went on to win this game and to had to score the you know to shock the chess world basically and announce that all her previous success in 2022 was not a coincidence. So yeah, this concludes this short introduction and the brief overview of Elena's best games. Of course, it is. Uh, hard to do justice to any player's career by singling out just five games uh, out of many they're played. Uh, I would definitely urge you and uh, recommend you to check some of other NS games, especially from Chennai 2022 Olympiad. They're extremely fun and entertaining and, and quite amazing to watch and analyze, to be completely honest. Uh, yeah, I'm personally very happy that we have her on the team for the 2022 Pro Chess League season. We are very much looking forward to seeing her performance there. But I'm also very, very curious to see how her further uh, career outside of the Pro Chess League will develop. And I will be rooting for her because I really think uh, she's a great talent and a very, very exciting player to follow. So this concludes this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, uh, subscribe and uh, share it with, with people. Uh, and stay tuned for more similar videos and other chess content featured on this channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.